Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Let us prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries by asking for forgiveness to the Lord our God. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we ask, Almighty God, that the nativity of the Savior of the world, made known by the guidance of a star, may be revealed ever more fully to our minds through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, who indeed is the victor over the world? but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one who testifies, and the Spirit is truth. So there are three who testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are of one accord. If we accept human testimony, the testimony of God is surely greater. Now the testimony of God is this, that he has testified on behalf of his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has this testimony within himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar by not believing the testimony God has given about his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever possesses the Son has life. Whoever does not possess the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you so that you may know that you have eternal life, you who believe in the name of the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has granted peace in your borders. With the best of wheat he fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth, swiftly runs his word. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Jesus proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Alleluia. Alleluia. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. It, it happened that there was a man full of leprosy in one of the towns where Jesus was. And when he saw Jesus, he fell prostrate, pleaded with him, and said, Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. Jesus stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, I do will it. Be made clean. And the leprosy left him immediately. Then he ordered him not to tell anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The report about him spread all the more, and great crowds assembled to listen to him and to be cured of their ailments. But he would, draw, but he would withdraw to deserted places to pray. The Gospel of the Lord. The miracles that Jesus performed had two components, a historical component and a symbolic one. The historical component tells us that they were real and that Miracles do exist. They still exist. Maybe you have um, seen one of them. Uh, miracles exist. And the, symbolical, the symbolic component tells us the message it contains. This is important to understand. The historical component, it was real. Uh, Jesus cured this leper. Jesus cured this leper. What is the message behind it? Very important. The message is Jesus is the Son of God. And whatever Jesus teaches has been testified by God his Father. Whatever Jesus teaches has the seal of the Father. Listen to him. Whatever Jesus teaches is true. It is good for our salvation. It is good for the salvation of our society, of our world. Jesus is God. Whatever Jesus teaches is good for our salvation, and it is sealed by the testimony of the Father. Listen to what St. John says in the first reading. Now the testimony of God is this that he has testified on behalf of his son. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar. By not believing the testimony God has given about his son. So through the miracles that Jesus performed, his father has testified on behalf of his son, saying, he is my son. Listen to me. Listen to his teachings. His teachings are word of God. His teachings are the truth about your, the salvation of your soul, the salvation of the world. Very important to understand this. Very important. The authority that Jesus has comes from being the son of God. Very important. And, and the, the miracles are just a consequence of his authority of his identity of being the Son of God. And that's why uh, everything that the churches, the, uh, excuse me, everything that the church teaches about God, about Jesus, the moral teachings of the church, they all come from God because they have been sealed by Jesus Christ, by his blood by his resurrection, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit. Huh? Notice what he says, St. John says, This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one who testifies, and the Spirit is truth. 
Now, this is the first lesson for you today. Uh, reinforce your faith in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, as the source of the Word of God. Jesus is the Word of God. And Jesus always tells me the truth. Always. The second aspect of this, this uh, gospel is that, it, and, and it is said by little words, it says, but he would withdraw to the certain places to pray. After an active work, Jesus goes to pray. Before working and after working, Jesus goes to see his father. Jesus goes to have contact with his father. Very important as well. Without prayer, we dry. Without prayer, we don't have the strength to act on behalf of Jesus. We don't have the strength to tef testify to Jesus. We cannot act as Jesus did. We don't have the motivation to do God's will. We are weak. Imagine um, yourself as a flower. You cut the flower. It might live for several, several days. But after, afterwards, it will die. So your, your prayer is the root of your flower that keeps it alive. You pray, you have the strength to be like Jesus, to act as Jesus to testify Jesus. So let us make room for prayer during this day. Maybe you have a busy day. I know you have school. You have a lot of work to do, a lot of homework, a lot of, of go, go, go through. But make a little bit of prayer during this day so that you can refresh your soul of strength to keep loving God and to keep loving others. Let us pray in silence. Let us pray, brothers and sisters, for the church, the world, and for one another. For our holy shepherds in the church, that their ministry of faith and healing may be supported by deep prayer, let us pray to the Lord. That God may bless the children within the borders of all nations through the efforts of their leaders to promote the dignity of each human life let us pray to the Lord that we who possess the threefold testimony, the water of our baptism, the blood of the Eucharist, and the indwelling spirit may believe that we also possess eternal life in Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord for all who are afflicted, sick, or depressed especially those who count on our prayers, that they may be given faith in the Lord's will to reach out to them in compassion and power. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that God, who gave us eternal life in his Son, may reveal this life in our loved ones who have completed their time on earth and bring them into his heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Merciful and almighty God, hear our prayers and grant what we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, through the divine work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always, and every word to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize him, God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Charles our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you through all the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to our apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O God, who touch us through our partaking of your sacrament, work, we pray, the effects of its power in our hearts, that we may be made fit to receive your gift through this very gift itself, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen.